Hopefully the camera will focus on me this time. Because last time it really wanted to focus on the candle and it's like, I don't want to have to get rid of the candle. But I need the camera to focus on me. <laughs> you know. You know how it is. Hello there, welcome back to The Closet Historian. Today I wanted to put together a little bit of a vintage shopping tip sort of video. Um, my price guides for what I usually pay for vintage items when I'm out shopping either in person or mostly as we know online. I do most of my vintage shopping online, but I wanted to give you guys a general breakdown of like the different types of vintage items and what I would pay for each of those items, whether it's a piece of costume jewelry or a piece of clothing, um, what in general range that I usually stick to while building my collection or what I have stuck to while building my collection. Of course, I do hope to keep building my collection and stick within these similar price ranges, but it's not always possible. Sometimes items are rarer and you will have to sp uh, explore on certain items, of course, um, but we'll get into that all in a minute here. I really do think that if you are patient and put in the time searching through many pages, of uh, results on eBay or Etsy, you can score really great vintage items for really good prices and really good deals. That is how I have built my collection over the years. Um, it wasn't, you know, just sitting down and buying whatever was available at the time. If you go and look for a red vintage handbag and they're all really pricey, wait a couple months and you might be able to score one for 20 bucks. That's just kind of how this game works. It's how, how the game of vintage collecting seems to work. So if you are willing to be patient and put in the time searching through like all the possibly terrible results, the many, many pages, then you can find deals out there. And I uh, I think you should put in the time to do so because then you can build your, I, I, it's this, that's how you end up with more instead of just a few things. Like for me, I would rather uh, have three vintage handbags that are like faux leather and just as cute from the 50s than one leather handbag, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I'm more of a maximalist, as we know, I'm a clutter person. I like having lots of stuff. So this is how I have amassed all my things is by searching out bargains. And I think you can too. So when it comes to vintage clothing, I don't actually buy a lot of vintage clothing online or in person or anytime, just because as a seamstress, I do like, I do prefer almost making my own vintage style reproduction clothes, just because I can, I, I know that they're sturdy because they're brand new and I can toss them in the washing machine or I can not have to worry about splitting seams and things like that. Because when you are wearing vintage clothing, you have to consider that the items are possibly, you know, 70 years old um, and have not only wear and tear when you get them, but it will be easier to get wear and tear on them as you wear them. You have to be a little bit more careful and seams sometimes will split on you because thread has rotted. There's like a lot of things to consider when buying and wearing vintage clothing, but for me, I just, uh, sometimes I think the cons outweigh the pros when it comes to wearing actual vintage clothes. And it is quite expensive to invest in good condition vintage clothing. So when it comes to vintage clothing, I like to pay around 100 to $150 for a 1940s or 50s dress, um, something like that. I just feel like that's a good range to get something that is still in really good condition, maybe one or two flaws. Uh, something that's gonna be in spectacular condition can go for a very high price. This is a you know, very collectible market, especially if something has like a designer label or is uh, from like a known company or design house or uh, is a knockoff of even of a, a known designer. Uh, those can go for a little bit more, of course. Uh, the thing about vintage is the price can only go up really, but things that are under a hundred dollars mm, scare me a little bit. Usually there are gonna be multiple condition issues. Sometimes you will see vintage clothing items listed as as is. This usually means there are more, more than one like serious condition issue. Sometimes things are even sold as just like collection pieces, meaning that they know that they cannot be worn anymore. Something about them is falling quite like literally apart and they're known that they're more of like a museum almost piece at this point. So pieces that are listed as is can usually have like fading, bleeding of the colors, holes, tears, runs in the fabric, all kinds of different little issues that now it may be subtle and you could totally still wear that item and maybe it still has a couple years of life left, but uh, just be careful when you're buying things that are as is because I know you can get a great deal sometimes, but you might end up, you know, only being able to wear the item once because it might fall apart on you the rest of the way or whatever it is. So just be careful when shopping for vintage clothing. So again, for vintage dresses, I like to stay around 100 to $150. Of course, this means I cannot go out and buy a new vintage dress all the time, but that's why I tend to sew my own vintage reproduction because I can do it for cheaper. And then the items themselves are actually hardier because they are brand new, even if they are made to look old. Um, so that's kind of the reason I stick to sewing more so and then reproduction as well. I, especially for dresses, I think, because dresses are easy enough to make on your own. I know that not everyone can sew, so that doesn't sound easy, but dresses are easier to make than say suiting. Now for vintage suits, I will pay anywhere from 100 to $250 for a really nice, good condition vintage suit, either from the 40s or the 50s. Um, this is for a suit set, like a skirt and a 
um, jacket. Uh, or you can sometimes find suits that have three pieces, which is epic. And you won't find one of those, I don't think, for $250 or less. Because to have a three-piece suit still all together and in good condition is worth at least $400. Uh, to most, any any vintage seller worth their salt will be selling that for a pretty penny. Um, and of course, like dresses and all vintage items, vintage suits can go, just go up in price, um, especially for ones that are in super great condition. I try and buy only or only buy things that are in really good condition. That's why my price ranges are probably a little bit higher than some people's. And then again, these are just investment pieces, especially a suit because a suit is so versatile and wearable for so many occasions. I think everyone should at least try and get one classic skirt suit. Um, whether you have to get like a 60s one, which is going to be a little bit less of an investment usually. Uh, their 60s stuff still goes for a pretty high price, but like a 60s suit versus a 40s suit, you'll probably be able to get one from the 60s for a little bit less than your 40s one because obviously the 40s ones are even rarer. But suiting is one of those things where it's like very hard to replicate. Uh, no reproduction companies are making nice vintage quality suits anymore. Like no one is doing that. The only I think the only people who make the same quality suits that they have from the 40s and 50s are probably, you know, modern couturiers and like high fashion people and they're not making them in 1940s styles particularly. Um, so to get that quality of tailoring, you really do, you have to buy vintage. I don't think I could sew a vintage suit as nice or like make one as nice as the ones that are available. So I enjoy buying vintage suiting. That's the main vintage clothing item that I invest in or buy are vintage suits. And the most expensive one I've ever bought was $250. And that was my Lillian suit. Um, and because it was this designer label that is very sought after, even though it had condition issues, that's why it was listed at $250 because it had some, it has some moth um, damage going on, but for Lillianne, that fits me perfectly. I really sprang and um, sprang for it and spent $250 on that suit. So that's the most expensive suit I've ever bought. Um, but of course, again, suiting, you can go up and up in price here, but as usual, that's just the kind of range I stick to is around $100 is what I'm looking to pay for a suit. And I will go up from there if it's something spectacular. When it comes to vintage clothing, separate items, whether that's blouses, sweaters, or skirts, I usually try and stick around $50. That's the general like a uh, target price I'm looking for when it comes to a separate, of course, something like a hand painted circle skirt or a collectible border print skirt possibly can go for a lot more than that. But that's the general range I'm trying to stick to when I buy separates when it comes to vintage clothing. And then for things that are like uh, really special, like evening gowns or really special cocktail gowns, I could see uh, the range being more from like $100 to $300 for something su super spectacular. Again, I don't really, it's not really in my budget right now, but that's what I would look to pay if I were in the market and had the budget to invest in a like cocktail dress or an evening gown, I would expect to pay possibly $300 for a 1940s evening gown. No problem. Just because to find things in nice condition, um, you know, it, it's, they're rare and therefore they're costly, but moving on to accessories, because that is what I collect the most and what I buy the most and what I'm most knowledgeable about as far as what you can get for a deal, um, basically. So we'll move on to accessories and I'll talk to you first about vintage handbags. When it comes to vintage handbags, there are a couple of different varieties. I think there's so many different styles, but my like main categories are for like 40s, 50s, 60s handbags, like bag with a handle. Um, they often, you can find ones that are in a faux leather, a faux patent, a fabric or a satin, um, or even in straw or wicker. This general range of bags, I think you can find for like a super steal. Sometimes I've gotten them for $10. Most of the time I pay around 15, uh, you know, under 20, $25 for really cute, still great quality handbags. But of course they are faux leather or, um, some sort of like plastic or fabric material. Usually that means they are less than like a real leather or real reptile skin bag. So for just regular old 50s, 60s handbags, I will pay as low as $25. I try not to pay more than that, honestly. Um, I've collected a whole rainbow of them. Most of them I paid 15 to $25 for. So try and find them for around that price if you can. Uh, there are gonna be ones that are per, they're listed for $130. And you know, you just, you just skip those ones. I mean, if you wanna invest like that, you totally can. And like these items are only gonna become more collectible over time. So I wouldn't feel like bad if you've paid $100 for like a faux leather 50s handbag, because again, it's only going to get rarer and more expensive as time goes on and we get further away from the 1950s. But I've gotten really great 50s purses for like $20. So I really think you can stick to a lower budget in these areas if you would like to. As for genuine leather and reptile skin handbags, I usually try and stick around again, $50 for those. Um, I've gotten two reptile, I have two snake skin like actual snakeskin bags, one in black, one in brown. And I believe I paid around $45 for both of those. Um, not at once, not together, but like $45 individually for each of those. That was around the price range I pay for like a reptile skin bag. And I'm sure they went for more back when they were actually sold. Like if you were to do all the math and inflation and stuff like that, I, that, that seems kind of like 
quite a deal for a real reptile skin bag and they are such a classic piece that it's totally worth investing in so i will pay a little bit more for a real leather or a like real skin bag um, and i don't have any trouble buying leather or reptile skin like it doesn't really bother me uh, i would like to not really necessarily buy new ones but this isn't on the same level as fur for me which is a whole different conversation but in general real leather and real reptile skin bags around $50 is what I try and pay. Again, you will see these listed sometimes for up to $200. You do not have to pay that. If you keep searching and you go through every single page on Etsy, you will find them for $40 and you can score them for much cheaper than some of the higher listed ones are uh, seem to be going for. Now for clutch handbags, as we all know, I, I love a clutch handbag. I will pay anywhere from like $8 to $100 for a clutch handbag. Um, and the difference there is like for the straw handbags I get and I wear in the summertime all the time, those are usually uh, the same styles were made from the 1940s through the 80s or very similar styles. So the ones I buy are usually probably from the 80s and they're usually going for around $15 on Etsy. So you can pick them up quite cheap. So sometimes I can get really inexpensive clutches. You can get some nice 60s faux leather, very like rockabilly style clutches for under $20 on the internet. Um, and then, you know, the more rare and nicer the clutch, the more expensive it's going to be, of course. So like cord clutches are usually $25 up to $75, and I try and pay $25 unless something is really spectacular and I feel, feel it's missing from my collection. Um, and then the very high end of the clutches that I've bought, like $100, um, are going to be the plastic flex, plastic flex clutches that I love collecting. You guys have seen me talk about those here on the channel. I'll actually put a card to my uh, a video where I talk about or show all my clutches, and you can see all my plastic flex clutches in that, and that uh, those I'll pay... I've paid $25 for them, but I will pay up to like $75, $100 for a nice Plastiflex because they're very collectible and I like snatching them up, but that's kind of like a, an edge case for me when it comes to handbags. In general, I try and keep my clutch purchases around $25 or less, but um, obviously I, I branch out from that when something is spectacular. Oops. Now, when it comes to vintage gloves, I try and pay around $10 for a pair of gloves. Again, if something is a color that I just don't come across very often and I do have a larger glove size, so if it's a larger size glove in a rarer color, I have paid up to, uh, I think the most expensive gloves I've ever bought was $30. Um, and that was, that felt like a lot to me for, for, for a pair of gloves. So I really try and stick to, like I've got most of the gloves I have gotten. And if you guys have seen my glove drawer, uh, I have a lot of gloves. I've stuck to around like seven to $15. Like that range is what I try and pay for gloves. So again, you do not have to spend an enormous amount on this particular item, of course. Um, sometimes if you have a rarer size, uh, then like, cause for me, I have a seven and a half, eight glove. Um, so having a larger glove size means I sometimes have to pay a little bit more for certain colors just because I don't see them come up very often. So if I see them come up for like $20 and I'm like, I don't want to spend $20 on gloves, but I haven't seen yellow like that in a long time. Sometimes I'll snap them up anyway, but um, in general around $10 for gloves. Now for silk scarves, I usually try and pay around $20 or less for silk scarves. Usually I try and pay like $10, $15 if I can, if maybe I uh, there's a lot of shops on Etsy exclusively sell scarves or silk scarves and poly scarves and just scarves in general. Um, so usually sometimes those shops will have sales and I can buy a couple for only like $15 and like bundle them together and get a deal. But for silk scarves, uh, even 100% silk ones, even ones from the 40s and 50s, I try and pay $20 or less. Uh, I'm not into collecting designer scarves. Of course, the prices will go up if you are looking for Hermes or Dior or fancier scarves or rarer scarves from the earlier 50s and into the 40s, but for silk scarves, I like to pay around $20 or less. And for silk scarves as well, you can find those quite cheap at the thrift store most of the time. You can find them for 99 cents at the thrift store, so this is an item where I particularly think it is better to go and try and find in person out thrifting unless you're looking for a specific color or pattern, which I often am. Um, if you're looking for like a plaid blue and green scarf, then obviously Etsy is going to be a better bet because you can actually search and find things like that. But Scarves are such a good deal out and about that I really recommend thrifting when it comes to scarves because then you can get them for way less than $20 for like $2.99 or whatever it is at, at Savers or Arc or something like that. Now, when it comes to vintage hats, I have paid anywhere from like $15 up to about $80 is the most I've ever paid for a hat. Um, that was my striped, so I'll put a picture, uh, striped silk 1940s hat that is just, uh, it was too good for me to let it sit in my Etsy wish list for long because someone else was going to snap that up and I just think it's a very pretty and very 40s style and a little bit rarer so I was happy to pay $80 to make sure that one stays with me forever and I do enjoy wearing that hat all the time. Of course you can wear that with anything because it's got all those colors in it. So uh, that was the most most I've ever paid for a hat but usually you can get like 1950s like little close little hats in velvet or wool for ten dollars on etsy sometimes you do not have to pay a ton for all of the vintage hats of course the more unique and like 
almost iconic the styles are, then the higher the prices go. But I usually stick between like $10 and $50 for hats. I try to, and then only spend over $50 if something's like a spectacular straw or something super rare and very 40s looking. So um, for hats, I try and stick around $10 to $50. Like that's basically like 30, like in the middle of that range is where I hit most of the time. But every once in a while, you'll find something for a super steal. And every once in a while, I'll spring for something really epic. Um, but I really like hats, so I don't mind spending a little bit more on them as well. Now, I have never bought vintage shoes, so I cannot really recommend anything there. Uh, I am have a larger size foot, so I really, I don't even bother looking for vintage shoes. I always just buy reproduction, and of course, my recommendations for that, you can find here on the channel as well, um, Royal Vintage Shoes, Free Mix Shoes, Bait, Chelsea Crew, um, but I don't really buy vintage shoes, so I have no really price guide for those, sorry. The same goes for vintage undergarments. I've never bought vintage under, uh, undergarments before. Usually I try and buy slips, uh, either skirt slips or full slips at the thrift store. So again, for like less than $5, um, but I haven't bought like actual 50 slips or anything like that, which you can pay up to $40 for now because um, to find ones again in larger sizes in con good condition is rare. So um, I don't have a lot of experience buying vintage undergarments either. And then of course we come to vintage costume jewelry. Um, which each different item in vintage costume jewelry I will spend different amounts on so I will give that breakdown to it for you But in general for vintage costume jewelry, you do not have to pay a ton of money for vintage costume jewelry You can like get a Trafari brooch for ten dollars. You can get signed Boucher, Lisner, Coro, Trafari, all these You can get those signed pieces for still ten, fifteen dollars, maybe up to twenty five um, And then there will be other sellers that are selling them for a hundred and twenty five So of course you just don't buy the pricey ones you you, you go go for the lesser Lesser priced ones there. Um, and then things that are unsigned, sometimes you, again, you can get them for $5. At the thrift store, you can find brooches and earrings and things like that for very, very cheap. So when it comes to collecting vintage costume jewelry, I really don't think you have to spend a crazy amount. For vintage earrings, whether those are postbacks or clip-ons or screwbacks or whatever they are, whatever they are, for vintage earrings, I like to pay around five to $15. Um, I've rarely paid more than $15 for a pair of vintage earrings unless they match like a set I already have. Um, I did that vintage sets video. I, if I can do another card, I will, um, where I talk about how vintage jewelry used to be quite matchy matchy. So if I have like a brooch and a bracelet and I see the earrings and like they're listed, you know, more than 15 bucks, which is what I normally would pay if they're like 25, because I would like to complete the set and I'm a magpie, I'm like, I'll, I'll spring for that. But normally I, I mean, you can find vintage earrings for like $7. So why pay more if, again, you can get like Trafari or Lisner for under 10 bucks? Go for that. So I don't usually pay more than $10 for vintage earrings. For vintage brooches, I will usually pay anywhere from like 10 to up to $40. I think $50 is probably the most I've ever paid for a brooch. This actually I wore today because it is the most expensive brooch I've ever bought. It was like $54. This I just thought was very rare. It's a celluloid, painted celluloid brooch from the late 30s or 40s. Um, and I just thought that was super rare and would be so cute with all things because of those multicolored. So I did spring on this, uh, spring out, splash out for this brooch. But um, mo most of the time I'm paying, again, 25 sort of as like a general area, but anywhere from 10 to like $50 for brooches basically, but I try and stay again on the lower end of that. And you definitely can stay on the lower end of that for vintage jewelry. Again, if you find something that is amazing and you want to splash out for it, go for it. Um, this is a super collectible area, but you do not have to spend a lot of money, I guess, in order to collect vintage costume jewelry is what, what I would like to impart upon you. And saying that, of course, for sets um, where you're getting an earrings, necklace, bracelet, brooch, um, or any any combination of those things, obviously sets are gonna go for more money. Although I have, again, gotten like earrings and necklace sets for, I think like the cheapest I've ever gotten, like a Lisner plastic, um, like embellished 50s necklace and earrings, I think was like $13 or something like that. So you can get sets for cheap, um, especially if they're like lesser base metal, like very costumey costume jewelry, um, but still from the 50s or 60s and they will look great with your vintage clothes or vintage style clothing. Um, but you can get sets for less or you can get like a full Trafari rhinestone and metal set can be up to $175. I would have no, if I had the budget, if I had the money, I would not mind paying $170 for a full set like that because that's, it's just a versatile and awesome thing to have in your jewelry wardrobe. So I don't think you can really overpay too much for a set of costume jewelry. As long as it's under like $200, I would say my max cap for like a full set of like Trafari or Lizzen or something like that. But sets of course go for a little bit more than individual pieces, which just makes sense. 
for vintage costume jewelry necklaces, I try and stay around $25 as well. Of course, I have scored things for much cheaper, around $10 up to maybe like $40 is the most I think I've ever spent on a vintage necklace, but I try and stay around $25 again for necklaces. And then the same is true of bracelets. Um, bracelets, I don't think I've ever really paid more than like $35 for a vintage bracelet. And again, it would have to be something quite spectacular to get me to spend more than that. But again, you can collect these for $10, $15, no problem. Um, you can get, you know, get yourself a gold and a silver bracelet and you should be quite good to go when it comes to building a jewelry wardrobe. You can do it on the cheap for sure with vintage costume jewelry. So those are the general prices that I'm aiming for when I'm shopping for vintage to add to my wardrobe and my collection. Those are the general sort of prices I have paid, the th uh, numbers I keep in my head when I am browsing so that I know uh, or like what I've paid in the past and what I'm comfortable with paying. Of course, everyone is comfortable spending different amounts on their vintage or, um, you know, is comfortable with different condition issues that will lower their prices. So you don't have to pay this much for something. Usually you can find things for even cheaper than I have spoken about in this video. It's just, you might have to accept a lesser condition or like have, it might have more condition issues. That is the deal with vintage. The more expensive it is, the more pristine it is usually. Um, sometimes you'll find vintage clothes that still have the tags on them. They are like brand new vintage clothing. And obviously that's going to go for more things like that. So these are just a general price range. And of course, these are just my opinions and what I pay for things. Of course, you do not have to, these are not rules. You can pay whatever you would like while shopping for vintage, but this is just the kind of range I stick to. And I wanted to share this with you guys. If you are newer to shopping for vintage and maybe hopefully, hopefully this will help you guys. I'm not really sure. Let me know. Let me know if this was helpful in the comments below. And if you uh, have seen me wear any particular vintage item or some, seen something in one of my collection management videos or hauls or anything, and I didn't mention the price, I'll tell you. So if you ask me about it in the comments below, I will totally share what I have paid for any of my items just because I feel like that is good and educational for the whole community as a as a whole. And if you are wondering, uh, you know, what would I pay for this or what would I pay for that or things like that, if you want my opinion on any of that, again, just put it in the comments below and I will let you know uh, to the best of my ability what I think some things are worth and things like that. But thank you, as always, for tuning in today, and I will see you all again real soon here on the channel. Bye.